Naruto is not a story known for its romance. Many people don't like the romantic development the main characters got, Naruto and Hinata and Sasuke and Sakura, and for good reason. Those couples barely had any screen time of developing their romance, which leads to a less than ideal payoff for both of them. Especially Naruto and Hinata, who needed an entire movie to develop their relationship. But just because the story doesn't focus that much on romance, it doesn't mean that the characters don't deserve interesting relationships, and you can only think about what could have happened if Kishimoto had other ideas for final pairings and couples in the series. In this video, we're going to be exploring the most interesting ships, you could say, that never really happened in the Naruto story, but could have happened if things had gone differently. And let's start off with Sasuke and Ino. Ino was one of the first girls that had any romantic interest on Sasuke, at least from the ones we we know the names of, with Sakura of course, and her entire character in the beginning of the series was essentially her rivalry with Sakura for Sasuke, and this motivated the character a lot. It gave Ino the drive to try and get with Sasuke, and of course this could have happened maybe, though Sasuke never really shows any affection towards Ino unlike he does with Sakura. For people who are unaware or maybe just don't remember, Sasuke actually blushes a couple of times in the manga when he sees or talks to Sakura, unlike in the anime where they just omit this detail, which is kind of a cheap move when you're developing the romance between two very important characters. When Ino hugged Sasuke against his will, he seemed very annoyed and he just didn't very feel, you know, good in her presence, so much so that he never even exchanges a word with Ino in the entire story. And for a girl that really likes Sasuke, this is probably really bad, and I just think Ino was never really going to get with Sasuke anyways. But it is an interesting couple to put it in here because some people really like this pairing. Continuing with Sasuke, let's go over another character that had a very big crush on him and unfortunately Sasuke never really followed through. And that was Karin. Karin joined forces with Sasuke and Team Hebi and after that Team Taka. Her main goal was to sleep with Sasuke and be with Sasuke for the <laughs> rest of her life. That that's the only reason why she agrees to join Sasuke in the first place. Sasuke wants her for her abilities, Karin wants Sasuke for something else. Of course, Karin still helps Sasuke during fights and all, but Sasuke never ever seems interested in Karin, even though she really throws herself at him at times. Now, she tries to disguise her crush on Sasuke to not very stellar results. She tries to portray herself as this hard woman that doesn't really care about Sasuke Sasuke's well-being, but of course, everybody sees through her facade, and she definitely has a big crush on Sasuke. So much so that even after Sasuke stabs her with his Chidori spear and almost kills her, and then she becomes a prisoner of the Leaf Village, she still has a massive crush on him. You would figure she would grow out of it because of those things, but no, she remains a fervent Sasuke simp. And when Sasuke returns to the Leaf Village and she just kind of runs out of prison and encounters Sasuke there in the middle of the war arc. Instead of punching Sasuke because she's mad at him for what he did to her, she punches Trigetsu instead and when Sasuke says, yeah, Kari, I'm sorry, she's just, oh no, yeah, it's fine, I don't care anymore, I just love you so much, Sasuke. It's kind of pathetic for that character, to be honest. Kishimoto should probably given her something different to do and that's the point of the story. It's just that their relationship would never really happen and Karin just looks so meek whenever she is with Sasuke, which is almost all the time when she's on screen doesn't really portray her as the best type of character out there. Moving on to another interesting Karin pairing and this will be Naruto and Karin. Now some people wanted Naruto and Karin to be together so that the Uzumaki clan can actually reborn or something. They would have a lot of descendants and very many Uzumaki descendants to spread around the world and restore the Uzumaki clan. Now you could argue Naruto's doing this with Hinata anyway but they're like half Uzumaki, so who knows? But just imagine the size of the chakra pools these guys, you know, the children of Naruto and Karin would have. It would be pretty insane. Like, we've never really seen a full-blooded Uzumaki in action. I mean, I guess Kushinim could have been one, but not really. We don't see our parents. And Nagato was definitely, you know, just half Uzumaki. His dad had red hair, but not his mom. Or was it vice versa? Only one of his parents had red hair, the other 
didn't, so he wasn't a full Uzumaki. Imagine a full-blooded Uzumaki, but I guess Naruto and Karin are already kind of diluted in terms of being Uzumaki. We don't know Karin's parents either, but you know, you know, Naruto is the guy with the most chakra in the entire world, so just imagine there's kids. For any hints as to a romantic relationship developing, we just have a brief moment when Karin is captured by the Leaf Village after Sasuke stabs her and Kakashi is carrying her. Naruto appears and she can sense chakra. She feels Naruto's chakra and she just thinks it's so warm and different from Sasuke. It's as though it's the exact opposite of Sasuke's chakra. It is implied that Karin feels comfort upon seeing that and this could eventually blossom into a relationship or feelings, but it never really does. But still, an interesting couple to think about. The next one is Neji and Tenten, a couple everybody thought was eventually gonna be a thing ever since part one, because even though Tenten doesn't overt simp over Neji, she really respects him and always says, oh, Neji's great, he has the best jutsus, he is the greatest canon I've ever seen, he has the perfect defense. Like every time Tenten's on screen, she's either getting bodied or she's just praising Neji to no end. So this couple was pretty much set ever since part one. It just never happened because Neji came down with a case of dying, man, and a, a shtick just kind of ended that relationship very abruptly. Now, maybe this wasn't really gonna happen in the end because Tenten, sure, she seems very sad upon Neji's death, but Rock Lee cries way more than her. So maybe Rock Lee and Neji were to be a thing? I don't know. Regardless, Neji's dead, so uh, there's no one that's gonna get a relationship with Neji anymore. And did Neji really want to have children with Tenten? They'd just be kind of like useless Hugas that would instead of, you know, use the gentle fist, they'd just be throwing kunais and using their Byakugan. It, it wouldn't be the greatest thing, I suppose. Still, never happened. The next couple is probably one of my favorites on this list. The one I think could have been really cool for the story, and this is Ino and Choji. This may seem weird at first glance, because Ino and Choji do get married to other people in the end of the day, and they were friends ever since they were very young kids. The people they marry are pretty random, especially Choji, like Kishimoto, when he was about to choose Choji's wife, he put every single lady that was single at the time on the wall, like a picture, and then he tossed a dart and it landed on Karoi. Okay, it's gonna be Karoi, even though they literally didn't exchange a single word in the entire series. I don't even think they share a panel together. I mean, maybe one of those panels in the middle of the war where every single character is present, but other than that, they don't have a scene, <laughs> and they become a couple. At least Ino and Sai had a couple of scenes building that up, but still it's very, you know, lacking in that regard. And Sai is just kind of a mad character, nobody really cares too much about him. But if Ino and Choji were to be together in the end of the series, it could have been much more interesting. First, because they knew each other for a long time, and you would expect that they could have developed a you know, romantic feeling towards each other, but that's not all. The interesting thing about this pairing is that Ino made fun of Choji many times before because he was fat. Not overtly telling he was a fatso because this just pissed him off, but in the Sasuke retrieval arc when Team Asuma is in that steakhouse just celebrating Chikamaru's promotion to tune in, Ino is like, Choji, you should stop eating too much. You're not gonna get the girl's attention if you should keep on doing that. And then Chikamaru just comes around and yeah, she doesn't know what she's talking about. You do you, do you, Choji. You're fine. But then, of course, if Ino remained this, you know, girl that kind of only cares about the looks of people, yeah, it can be a character, but it would be much more interesting if she developed further than this. And apparently she didn't, because she liked Sasuke up until the end of Naruto Shippuden, when Sasuke becomes a very bad rogue ninja that goes to the Cloud Village and captures the Eight Tails and the the Leaf Village decides to go and kill Sasuke, she is crying a lot because of him, just like Sakura is. So yeah, she still liked Sasuke in that point in the story, and she also had a crush on Sai, which, well, Sasuke and Sai are the two good-looking guys in the Konoha 12. It appears she never grew out of this very superficial type of relationship she's looking for. But if she realized over time that Choji is a really nice guy, and just because he's a little bit chubby doesn't mean he's a bad person or that he isn't worthy of being a husband or something, it could have been very interesting interesting for Ino in the story, if she grew out of the sense that she needs to be with somebody that's hot, it could have been good, like, it's one of the very 
common tropes of romantic stories, not even manga or anime romance stories, but any story in the world that this girl that only cares about hot guys and she doesn't care at all about the fat or the ugly guy but eventually she comes to understand how this guy is and how great of a guy he is and eventually she falls in love with him and then maybe when she does fall in love with him he doesn't care about her anymore because she mistreated him so much and this can lead to very interesting romantic developments until when the characters finally kiss each other and they come up together and they become a couple and this happy and all that. It could have been good for Ino and Choji. It would have given Ino this development and it would have given Choji a big W because Ino is hot. Just look at her Boruto design. So both characters would win in this regard. Choji would get the hot girl. Ino would get development. Best couple ever, man. Just never happens. I don't think Kishimoto ever considered that couple a possibility, to be honest. I find it an interesting couple, so I put it in here. Oh, and now let's move on to a couple that some people may consider a little bit cursed, but I personally I think it has potential in the story and that will be Sasuke Uchiha and Hinata Hyuga. Now I know what you may be saying, Hinata and Sasuke never exchange a single word of dialogue in the entire Naruto manga and yes that is true. I believe they exchange one word in a single Naruto movie and then they talk a little bit more in Burrito but Burrito is not canon so it doesn't matter but in the canon Naruto story yeah they do not exchange words. However just because they don't do that it doesn't mean they couldn't be an interesting couple in the story just looking at their characters. First off, they are both from very prestigious and famous powerful clans in the Leaf Village. They are both children of the head of the clan and they are both underappreciated by their dads. Especially Hinata now because Sasuke's dad is not exactly alive to underappreciate him but when Sasuke was young he did feel as though he was under the shadow of Itachi constantly so much so that his dad only begins to compliment him and actually care about Sasuke when Itachi is kinda turning towards the leaf side in that entire conflict with the Uchiha clan. But then of course in Fugaku's dying moments he tells Itachi to take care of Sasuke meaning that he's always loved Sasuke. So in the end of the day Fugaku really cared about Sasuke it's just that he wasn't very good at showing that and seven-year-old Sasuke didn't have that perception but Hinata well her dad has never been exactly a great dad dad for her. He's always said that Hanabi was a better suited candidate to become the leader of the Hyuga clan and you know he was also a hard guy. He kind of got his brother killed because he killed a guy saving Hinata. I suppose he saved Hinata in that flashback so that's something. But Hinata also always lived under the shadow of her clan and of her responsibilities. The two characters could bond over this relationship and it would also be interesting to see these two characters that are very much introverts in the interacting and developing feelings for each other. It could have been a very cutesy couple, you know? Sasuke struggling to express himself and Hinata just completely shy whenever Sasuke says something to her and then she kind of blushes. It, it, it kind of writes itself, to be honest. I think this couple has much more potential than Naruto and Sakura because Naruto is just like a goofball and Hinata is just like shy and like Naruto is clueless about everything and, and like their relationship's not the most interesting in the story. I must say. But if Sasuke was in Naruto's place, this couple could have been much more interesting. Of course, I'm looking towards this couple in a more rom-com lens, if that makes sense, in a rom-com manga or an anime or something, because obviously the Naruto story wouldn't be able to develop couples all that much, doing all those tropes with couples in manga, because, well, the story's not really about that. But this couple could have been very interesting. The next one is not exactly a couple, it's more of a person. This person is one of the saddest stories in the entire Naruto series when it comes to romance and that is Mei Terumi, the fifth Mizukage. The lady cannot catch a break. She never gets a husband. Even in Burrito when she's like 50 something, she is single as hell. And it's even sadder because we see her infinite Tsukiyomi dream. She was getting married in that dream. Her dream was to have a husband and she never does so. It's pretty tragic. 
tragic. But the thing is, she looks great. She is one of the prettiest ladies in the story. I cannot imagine that she wouldn't have like a thousand people interested in her. Which leads me to believe she is just way too demanding. She wants the perfect guy. Usually the perfect guy doesn't exist. In her infinite Tsukiyomi dream, we see the guy he is marrying is essentially a perfect looking guy. He looks like an idol or something. And yeah, she's not gonna find someone like that. May, maybe you should lower your standards a little bit because it's kind of hard to reach your heights. Still, it's tragic that she never finds anyone. Some people say Kakashi would have been very interesting for her and I agree, they're both very attractive. I think May would have liked Kakashi's appearance at least. And I don't know, man, Kakashi also is one of the guys that never gets with anyone. And you know, he seems to enjoy the, that type of stuff. He's always reading Jiraiya's books or maybe he has something for, for men. I don't know. Him and Guy, they seem to be very, very tied together. I don't know. Still, May and Kakashi could have been an interesting couple. They both become Hokages eventually in their lives. They could bond over that. It's just that they probably never even shared a single panel and obviously never talked to each other in the manga. But still, it's the same thing as Hinata and Sasuke. It, it kind of makes sense for these characters to be together and they could be interesting. Like, we never really see Kakashi in that type of situation before. But now we have to actually talk about the most tragic character when it comes to romance in the entire Naruto series. And that will be Jiraiya. Jiraiya and Tsunade is a couple that never happened, but people really wanted it to happen. And Jiraiya also wanted it to happen. He's been crushing on Tsunade ever since he was a kid. He was asking her out. And you can see that Tsunade left marks on Jiraiya, both physically and mentally. First, because when Jiraiya was snooping on Tsunade when she was in a hot spring, she punched him so hard she almost killed him, cracking several ribs and leaving a mark. And also because we see the first time Jiraiya meets back with Tsunade in the search for Tsunade arc that Jiraiya says, you are to become the fifth Hokage Tsunade. And Tsunade just refuses. She says, I refuse. And Jiraiya promptly says, oh, that's funny. I remember you saying the exact same words when I asked you out for the first time. Meaning that the guy never ever forgot that moment, even though they were probably 12 years old and that happened over 30 years ago. <laughs> of course, Tsunade moves on from that. She never really cares about Jiraiya romantically and she gets involved with Don, who also dies. So Jiraiya had his chance there after Don died, but he never took it. He went through a more um, questionable route in his romantic life. Let's let's put it that way. He liked to go to um, places with ladies and do his business there. I'm not judging, but their final scene together when Jiraiya is about to go to the rain village and confront Pain and promptly die, him and Tsunade have a heart to heart. Jiraiya takes Tsunade to this bar and they drink, get pretty drunk, and then they have this conversation. Tsunade seems to be rather enjoying Jiraiya's presence there in that bench during sunset, and you can see that Jiraiya kind of confesses her feelings to, to her again when, when he says, well, Tsunade, you've made me really strong because you've rejected me time and time again, and this can only make a man stronger, so I thank you for that. And Tsunade blushes when Jiraiya says that. Now, one could argue she's blushing because she was drunk, and this is how most characters are represented in manga and anime when they are drunk, but you can also interpret that as her blushing because she likes Jiraiya and that conversation was very cool and sweet between the two characters. Of course they're older than the other couples we're mentioning here but it could have still have worked. They both respected each other and maybe feelings from Tsunade's part could have begun to blossom in that moment. Of course Jiraiya was always in love with Tsunade so he'll be uh, completely down for it but he was thankful for Tsunade for everything she's done and even for rejecting him because in his mind he became stronger because of it. Of course, yeah, Jiraiya doesn't come back and Tsunade is crushed by it. She cries, she really wanted him to come back and I get the feeling that if he did, they could have become a couple, man. It could have been interesting to see them. Of course, Jiraiya's tragic death is integral to the story and I wouldn't have changed it, but it's just interesting to imagine that. Another couple that was one of those very early crushes in the story is Naruto and Sakura. Now, of course, Sakura was the first first crush Naruto had. Ever since Sakura appeared in the story in chapter 3, Naruto had a crush on her. It's essentially the prime reason for Sakura's character in the first place. Like, not that Sakura didn't progress after that, but she was just for Naruto to crush on and for her to crush on Sasuke so that they have that romantic dynamic between the group that 
romantic triangle. And of course, it's implied that Naruto's feelings towards Sakura were much more because he was a rival to Sasuke, and because Sakura loved Sasuke, she had to be Naruto's in his mind. Still, of course, Naruto cared about her, especially when Sakura begins to act nicer towards Naruto when she understands Naruto more as a person and begins to empathize with him and his struggle. But Sakura never really grows feelings towards Naruto. There is her fake love confession in the Five Kage Summit arc, which some people hate, but it's a very interesting character moment where Sakura makes this tough decision of deceiving her best friend so that he doesn't get hurt by Sasuke. Yeah, Naruto was Sakura's best friend by that point in the story. And because the Leaf Village and Sakura herself had decided to go and kill Sasuke to save themselves from more problems Sasuke would have caused, a war between the Leaf and the Cloud, she has to go and lie to Naruto about her feelings. She has to say, Naruto, it's fine, you don't have to fulfill your promise anymore because I don't love Sasuke. He's never done anything for me, so just let him go and be with me. And the interesting thing is that Naruto, the most clueless guy when it comes to women, completely catches Sakura in her lie. I mean, immediately he realizes Sakura's lying to herself and he says that he hates people that lie to themselves because Sakura obviously still had feelings for Sasuke, so he was having none of that. But had Naruto been more gullible, it would have been interesting to see See what would have happened. Would Naruto and Sakura actually end up together somehow? Would Sakura be kind of forced into this relationship she had no feelings towards? Because we see Naruto still likes Sakura, even in the war arc, even after Hinata confesses her love in front of him, sacrificing herself, getting stabbed by pain, Naruto doesn't care about Hinata at all. And he still likes Sakura. In the war arc, when Minato arrives and he says, is that your girlfriend? Naruto is you know, kind of naughty and says, yeah, she's my girlfriend. And then Sakura punches him and all that funny stuff, I suppose. But even then, like, Naruto doesn't care about Hinata at all. And it's in Naruto the last that we see how Hinata and Naruto end up together. And it's because of Sakura. Because Sakura tells Naruto, hey, Naruto, you should probably, you know, care about Hinata. She really likes you. Please like Hinata. And then all of a sudden, Naruto realizes I've liked Hinata all along, even though he gave her no thought at all, even though after she, you know, essentially died for him. It's not the best, I would say. I think Naruto and Sakura could have been a better couple because they do have this friendship, this bond that they develop, especially Naruto Shippuden, because Naruto and Sakura's relationship in part one has a lot more to do with Sasuke than to each other. But when you remove Sasuke from the equation, they actually grow in their relationship without Sasuke, which makes their relationship more interesting and their friendship tighter. And having Sakura realize that her words when she was confessing to Naruto were actually true, but she didn't realize that in the moment would be shocking for her, but in a strangely good way for the story, because then Naruto realized she was lying for him in that moment. But now she wouldn't be lying anymore, but Naruto wouldn't trust her when she says that to him. It could have been very complex. It doesn't happen because Naruto ends up with Hinata, probably the most boring couple in the entire story. And I've been saying that the entire video, so I'll probably stop now, but Sakura and Naruto could have been interesting. Now let's move on to another Sakura pairing, and some people really like this one, and that will be Rock Lee and Sakura. Rock Lee didn't really give Sakura the best first impression because for whatever reason he was already in love with her. Apparently she is really hot or something in the Naruto universe when Lee first shows up because he literally says, Sakura, please go out with me. You look really good. But then you don't really do that, do you, Rock Lee? <sighs> like, it's kind of creepy when you do that. And then he also sends those hearts by kissing the air and Sakura has to dodge them. Really creepy stuff. His haircut He's also not the most attractive with the ladies. I like Lee's haircut, but the ladies won't. And also his eyebrows don't help his case very much. So he definitely had the worst possible first impression on Sakura. But then he actually means business. When he goes in the forest of death to save Sakura, he puts his life on the line for her. Something that not many people would have done, especially people that fell in love in first sight. Because yeah, it's implied that Sakura and the others from Team 7 didn't know Rock Lee beforehand because they're very much impressed with his eyebrows, so it's very much love on first sight for Rock Lee. And he saves Sakura from the sound team. I mean, he loses to them, and so does Sakura, but this buys time for the reinforcements to arrive, and it essentially saves Sakura's life. And we can see that after Naruto and Sasuke wake up, and Naruto's like, oh, what's 
this, you know, thick eyebrow guy doing here? Sakura's like, don't you say that about Rock Lee. He is a good guy. And you can see Sakura's respecting Rock Lee much more. Of course, you know, Rock Lee still has that kind of a crush on Sakura. It does die down in Arthur Shippuden, which I'm glad. Like, it's fine when characters grow past their crushes. I like that. It's fine. It's just that they never really had any more development to it. I guess there's the moment when Sakura goes to the hospital and gives Rock Lee flowers, but Rock Lee is like training even though Gara essentially destroyed him and he's still like doing push-ups. It's a pretty heartbreaking scene and Sakura is heartbroken by that as well. But other than that, they don't ha really have a lot of uh, a relationship in the story, especially because Rock Lee vanishes in Naruto Shippuden. But some people really wanted Rock Lee to end up with her because they wanted Rock Lee to, you know, get someone because it's kind of implied that he doesn't have anyone in Boruto. And also some people didn't want Sakura to end up with Sasuke, so they want her to get out of that toxic relationship. And Rock Lee would have been a pretty nice guy for Sakura to end up with because he's not toxic at all. He's like the greatest guy there is. And the same thing could apply to this relationship that applied to Ino and Choji. Sakura could have developed further, you know, wanting this very handsome guy and actually begin seeing Rock Lee as a very suitable candidate for being a husband slash boyfriend. The next couple is probably the one people wanted the most, especially, you know, when you go to fandom discussions and all that. And that will be Naruto and Sasuke. I don't think this is very much a surprise. The two most important characters in the series, the two characters that share the most screen time. There's a lot of people that are gonna ship those characters, especially because of how Naruto treats Sasuke and Naruto Shippuden. But also there's precedent for them being together. They have a kiss and Naruto and Sasuke's kiss is the only on panel kiss in the entire manga. Nobody else kisses in the entire story, in the manga at least. I mean, there are kisses in movies and in filler episodes, but never in the manga. Their kiss is the only kiss and it happens really early on and it's their first kiss. Like, they have each other's first kiss, which is a pretty big deal, all things considered. So, of course, because of these elements, these characters are gonna be shipped. They are two friends and Naruto's friendship towards Sasuke, it borders on being toxic because even though Sasuke is like, no, I don't want you anymore, Naruto. Naruto's just coming back and saying, no, I have to take you back to the village, Sasuke, please come back during the entire Shippuden era, essentially. And you could say there are some scenes where if you're looking for, you could find romantic tension between the two, such as in the scene they're almost dying in the valley at the end, their arms had been blown off and their bloods, they kind of intertwine and that romantic sunset and they're pouring down their feelings towards each other. It's so romantic, isn't it? and the entire backstory they have together, the feelings and emotions and moments they've been through. Sasuke protecting Naruto with his life, sacrificing himself in the fight against Haku and Naruto doing the same for Sasuke over and over and Sasuke paying him back and then having this back and forth rivalry, maybe it's just pent up feelings the characters could never have expressed before. But then again, Naruto and Sasuke, they never really indicate that they have, you know, attraction for men. When they kiss each other, they almost puke. They don't feel Feel good at all guys can just be friends you know you know friendship between two males is pretty common in the world but their kiss it's pretty funny it's not the type of joke that I like that slapstick kind of a gag comedy thing I don't like that very much but in hindsight it's just funny to see those two characters kissing each other out of nowhere it's just because of that that I laugh and then in Naruto Shippuden there's an amazing joke taking back to this kiss when the nine tails tells Naruto what the hell are you talking about you never kiss anyone before before, except for Sasuke when Naruto tells the fourth Mizukage, oh, you, you've never kissed a girl. Like, it's an amazing joke, but I don't think these two characters were ever romantically attracted towards each other. But let me know in the comments below, what's the best Naruto pairing that never happened? Subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so already, and like this video to help me out with the YouTube algorithm. Let's go. It really helps. Thank you so much for watching.